Okay, that's better. Here we are. Hi! Um, I couldn't tell you the last time I vlogged. Actually, I'm just about to brush my teeth. Hold on. Okay, I've brushed my teeth. I'm just going to now wash my face. I thought I'd chat to you whilst I was doing it. Gabe's currently in the bedroom with the iPad on watching Hey Dougie because that's the only way that I can get anything done. Because Hazy's working this morning. It's just me. It's Thursday. I am actually in the salon today. And so Gabe is going to his childminder at... 11. She doesn't usually do Thursdays, but she's very kindly looking after Gabe for us today because Hayes is working, as I say. So I'll drop him at 11, then I'm working until this evening. So Hayes will pick him up. I've been meaning to vlog <laughs> ever since I like started vlogging this time, but honestly, it's just been like quite chaotic to be honest. I'm very, very pregnant, <laughs> as you can see, coming up to 35 weeks. And I've also been working a lot, so I'm a hairdresser, so that is very physical. So being heavily pregnant, that takes its toll. Hainsley was away last week abroad working, so I was like single mum life. My mum came up to help me halfway through the week. I was also working, so again, trying to kind of juggle all of that. But it's basically just been, I'm trying to work as much as possible. Sorry, this is, this is the reality of trying to get anything done slash yourself ready with a toddler when it's just you at home. Technically, I actually could just wait, drop Gabe to nursery, then come back and do all of this. It would be way less stressful, but <laughs> I'm also very out of breath because I'm so pregnant. <laughs> so also, I've got two gel nails missing. It's all just... I've been trying to work as much as possible, A, to fit clients in before Christmas, and B, to save money um, to have some time off. So, that means, because I'm self-employed, I have some weeks where I, I don't work all day, but I have some weeks where I am working every day, and um, that just gets quite exhausting. Also quite boring, I just don't really have anything to vlog because I'm working and then picking up Gabe and then making dinner and then we're doing bath and bed. And then I'm going to bed because I'm exhausted. I thought I would try and at least make this into some kind of vlog. I just wanted to have a chat really um, to check in and say, how are you? I'm trying out the Tatcha water cream. They do this in like a trial with this and the dewy skin cream, which is their two moisturizers. I really love the Sunday Riley Tidal moisturizer. And I love anything that's like a water gel cream. And so that's what this is. But I didn't want to commit to buying the full size in case I didn't like it. So I bought that and I, I think I like it for like a day moisturizer. Anyway. Okay, Gabe's upset. Right, I might have to like continue this a bit later. So hold on. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Hey. I'm at the stage of, I've got no makeup on obviously and I've just had my hair back because I finally have a day off today. I feel like I need to apologise again because this vlog is all over the place and I miss vlogging so much but I've just been so busy for a prolonged period of time and vlogging is the most time consuming of all of the content creation options it's one thing vlogging and like getting the camera out it's this it's the sitting down to edit which is what i'm really struggling time wise for and that is for a multitude of reasons but mainly because i've been working so much i have a toddler and i'm heavily pregnant so <laughs> if you could all be a bit lenient I, I mean you're all very like you get it i just i try and do this when i can but i really really miss doing it and it's my favorite thing to do out in terms of creating content but it's it is just the time i just do not have much time at the moment and i've also been doing content on like instagram reels and even tiktok which is a lot easier and a lot quicker but yeah in short that is my explanation for why i keep saying i really want to vlog more and then it just doesn't happen so i'm so sorry heading towards maternity leave um and i'm so grateful to be so busy with work that my business has has grown the way that it has and I'm able to work as much as I am. It, it does mean that I then don't get really time for anything else. And I work most days, but that could just be one client, but that one client will be like three to four hours. And the stage of pregnancy I'm at at the moment, 
that really takes it out of me because it doesn't take much <laughs> to take it out of me i'm then home looking after gabe and i'm so lucky because hainsley's at home as well we both work flexibly but both of us have been working a lot so we're really lucky to have a really flexible childminder as well so we, there's just been lots going on and it's one of those ones where it's like every week i think oh it's a quieter week this week and then it turns out not to be and someone will message and say they need their hair done and i will always try and fit people in because as i say i'm trying to do as much as possible before taking some time off for this baby i'm currently in town i've got a day off but again it's a bit like an errandy day i'm getting a bikini wax which i absolutely cannot wait for I'm trying to do everything much earlier because we're closing in on 36 weeks. Gabe came at 37 weeks plus three days. I know that babies aren't the same, but I'm hoping slash anticipating this baby might come early. I don't know, they might come late and then I'll be annoyed. But I'm, I didn't get round to getting a bikini wax done last time I had Gabe. Um, I had it booked for the week that he was born and then he was born and I couldn't make it. So. Um, so I'm making sure that I'm getting everything sorted and I just kind of want to get on top of everything as soon as possible and I wanted to start maybe building the crib today um, I want to start putting things together for a hospital bag situation but either way first things first bikini wax and then meeting my friend for coffee I'm then going to the supermarket and I'm getting my nails done this afternoon so it's a nice day but it's a busy day beige is really not my color when i'm this pregnant i'm at the stage of pregnancy where my face is really quite swollen and people think i've had my lips done again and i haven't that's just a glorious side effect of pregnancy that you swell um right i need to get moving so today no surprises um but today has been one of those days that's just run away from me i knew it was going to be like a busy manic day but yes, so what happened was, last time I saw you, I was about to go and get a bikini wax, which I got. I'm so, so pleased that I was able to. And then I went and met my friend for coffee. And then it was just a bit of a big rush um, because I then went to the supermarket, got home, then went to get my nails done. And then I was running late to get my nails done. And then I went to vlog in the car and I didn't. And now here we are. Only about 7.30 and I'm already in my um, dressing gown, about to do my skincare. Here's my nails. She got them done, didn't she? Little festive, little nod to the festive season. Is that focusing? So they're like a metallic-y red. Love them. Don't love my hands. I feel like they don't look too bad, but I feel like they're, they're also swollen. But anyway, I don't know how much detail I want to go into about this, but I wanted to just briefly touch on something to do with parenting and development and and with Gabe. Um, there's another thing that's kind of been going on behind the scenes that I have found <coughs> challenging and struggled with and has also contributed to sometimes not feeling like wanting to make content is Gabe's development. It's something that we're in a good place with at the moment, but it's something that has been very up and down since probably about July. It's basically, he's two, well he's two and two months and he's not talking which isolated isn't really anything to be alarmed about. Kids' development is huge, and they all develop at different rates, which is completely fine. And when I first started thinking, oh, he's not really talking, like he babbles and he's noisy, but he doesn't say any words, doesn't attempt to say any words, we don't have a back and forth, so he doesn't nod. He can't tell me yes. He can communicate in other ways, but if I say, do you want a yogurt, he doesn't nod. Do you want milk? He doesn't nod. But I know when I ask him if he wants milk, he recognises what I'm saying. But basically, Gabe has never done done anything remotely near kids that are kind of either side of his age. And I, I, I feel like it's just his personality. He's just very chilled. Haynes is very chilled. It's just like his dad. I started noticing that he wasn't really answering to his name. He doesn't point. And he... What was the other thing? Oh, his eye contact wasn't good. And so if you Google any of those things, those are the three like red flags associated with autism. They're all associated with autism. So anyway, as I said, I don't know how much I want to go. I, I feel like I'm not doing this to talk about Gabe. I don't want to focus on Gabriel. And like, I don't really, this, this was never going to be a family channel anyway, but even more so I'm like, I just don't want to bring attention to him because he's a child and I know that just from in real life, but also online, just, I wouldn't e want anyone to ever say anything or point something out because I just want to let him just 
be who he is and get on with it. And this channel is about me. And so the reason, I, I don't mean that like this channel is about me, but the reason why I'm talking about it is because I feel like having gone through this, if I can make one other mum feel seen <laughs> or, or just understood, that's why I'm starting to talk about this because having gone through it, it is so isolating and lonely and upsetting and you don't really know how to deal with it. Especially if you don't have anyone around you that's also going through something similar. It's, you just, it's so lonely and it's really upsetting. And as soon as you notice these things, just spending time with your, with your child is upsetting and quite triggering because all you see is the absence of what they're not doing. I, and other mums, if you've gone through this, you probably also recognise this as well, you then avoid spending time with other people and other children because, again, all you see is the difference. And it's been a bit funny with Gabe because, as I say, it's been up and down. And some days I thought, I don't think there's anything at all. And other days I'm then like, oh my God, Gabe, 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 give me something. I feel like we've turned a corner and those things that were there aren't anymore and I don't feel hugely concerned because now he always answers to his name, his eye contact is amazing, like he's constantly looking at us and wanting to engage with us and wanting to play with us. I've, I've kind of just seen like a switch go on I feel like. So I don't have huge concerns anymore but I just wanted to touch upon it because as I say if you're a parent going through it it's really really tough. And I cried so, so many times about it. Not that you would want anything physical to happen to your child, but it's not like something physical where it's like, well, this is the process of getting better. You really don't know if there's an issue at all and if there is how much of an issue it will be for kind of years to come. You literally can only take each day as it comes and no one will say to you. Like, I was like, if someone could just say to me, he will talk by the time he's three, and everything will be fine. You, I could have just been like, cool, I'll just chill and just wait and see. But no one can tell you that. <laughs> and as I say, you just don't have no, you don't, you don't have any idea. As I say, how much of an issue, if at all, how much to worry, if at all. But one thing I do know is that we didn't really have any kids around us that were that were similar to Gabe. Gabe's the only kid that's like him, and everyone else a few months older and a few months younger seemed to be developing at such a rate <laughs> that I was just like, oh my God, like Gabe is not like these other kids at all. He doesn't engage like them. He doesn't interact like them. But then when he's at home with us, like we see, do you know what I mean? Like you kind of know your kid as everyone has said to me. I say like in my heart of hearts, I just feel like this is Gabe. Um, and even if there is something like this is Gabe, this is who he is. He's gorgeous beautiful darling angel and I wouldn't change him but it's just there's just so much like it's, it's going through it as a parent and you feeling isolated it's also the pressure on kids behavior at certain ages and I've had so many like wonderful friends and family thankfully and also other people actually that have gone through this and gone through a diagnosis that I've been able to talk to which has been really comforting and that's the common thing it's like people understand there's a huge pressure on childhood development these days and I even was looking at the toys that he has and the ages all of them are three and above and it's like but we have these toys expecting him to be able to play with them now and actually barely any of them really when you look at it are age appropriate it's things that you realize you've done like constantly justifying your child to people like when he was in his buggy when he was younger he never really smiled at people like that would look in the buggy he would just stare at them and i'd always be like oh he's just really chilled and you find you realize that you've been doing that for quite a long time and older people specifically that if they might comment on like well why isn't he more like this and i've heard lots of people lots of parents talk about the older generation the expectation to cuddle them and oh give them a kiss and and our generation is much more like not forcing our kids to do that if they're not comfortable which i'm all for if i could say to anyone like advice for interacting with children if you notice something about someone's child like don't bring it up because i can assure you they've probably noticed it as well and they probably don't really know how to deal with it either and they're probably still coming to terms with it and it's probably very upsetting so 
just interact with kids as you would do and just let them be the kid that they are like don't force or expect anything from them because I really feel strongly about adults expecting things from children because they're children and they don't owe anyone anything except just to be themselves so I don't I've gone off on a bit of a tangent now but I just basically wanted to, to God I'm so out of breath <laughs> I just wanted to bring it up because like I say I feel like I I'm lucky that I've had a, a couple of people to be able to talk to this about but initially when you're kind of coming to terms with this and noticing things it is really isolating and lonely so if any of you are going through this or have noticed things and you're finding it particularly challenging and difficult like please know that you're not alone we actually have started to go into a speech and language group on a Wednesday which we were invited to and it was four kids that weren't in speech and language therapy but I think they've acknowledged that there's a need for it with COVID and all that kind of stuff and I cried the first one that we went to because <laughs> Gabe he wasn't even doing anything wrong like he was just not even wrong but he was just kind of running around and playing but he wouldn't sit for the nursery rhyme do you know what I mean like all the other kids would sit in the circle and do the nursery rhymes and he wouldn't and in any, any in any other instance that's just a kid but I also do feel like now that there has been a question mark raised over him it's almost as if there's even more pressure for him to to act in a certain way and so anything now isn't just him being a toddler it's like mm, like any heightened emotion it isn't terrible twos it's like oh is that sensory processing like does he have a problem managing his emotions do you know what I mean like I feel like I resent it a bit because he can't just be himself because everything is read into whereas other kids like my friends kids the way that they carry on sometimes a play group is completely excused because they're developing in like a more typical way I suppose so it's a really difficult one to kind of articulate and verbalize that and I don't have like we're not going through any kind of diagnosis stage at the moment we're just trying to support him with his speech and language and trying to encourage him to talk as much as possible and like I said the things that I was concerned about previously I, I'm I'm really not anymore so it is just going with it and taking it day as it comes but I just wanted to as I say talk about it because if I can give comfort to anyone from talking about this that's what I really want to be able to do because as I say it's it can be really quite upsetting so that's also another thing that we've kind of been dealing with which then affects how I feel when it comes to making content. So yeah, um, my battery's flashing, I'm really out of breath. Do excuse how I look, sorry, I'm just getting myself ready. It's Thursday today and it's the 1st of December. Can you believe it? Excuse the washing in the background there. I've just realized how messy this looks. Excuse, excuse, excuse. It's the 1st of December. And I've just realized that I am hoping to upload this on Sunday. And now it's like the start of Vlogmas, isn't it? So I'm just, just in time. But yes, my battery died the other night, but I just wanted to say preemptively, thank you for listening. And I was thinking that's actually the first time I've been able to talk about it at length without crying. So that's real progress. I do feel much better about our situation, but as I say, I just wanted to highlight it for anyone that might be not feeling, just feeling alone, as I said, and it's a, it's a very isolating thing to go through. So that's that but as i say i do feel better about the situation oh did i, I show i must have shown you my nails <clears throat> have i already said i've got the midwife this morning 36 week appointment didn't make it to that one with gabe because it was pushed back and then i had him so i think we do the birth plan today but i'm not sure then i'm working in the salon this afternoon and evening so i've got a long ish day today i don't feel that well i've been having a bit of a sore throat that's been coming and going the last few weeks um, but I just wanted to show you, I'm still in my pyjamas, <laughs> I just wanted to show you a couple of things because I just got some new bits sent over from Beyond Nine who I've spoken about before and I've meant, I've got loads of new stuff recently and I've got two new uh, like jumpsuits from Beyond Nine that I bought a few weeks ago. I actually did a try on of them on my Instagram so if you follow me on there you've already seen them but I wanted to show you guys them but I haven't got around to it and then Beyond Nine got in touch and were like can we send you something else and I was like yes please. Um, that would be great. I've got quite a few things from Beyond Nine. Uh, I talk about them quite a lot because I just love them as a brand. They are theoretically a maternity brand, but as the name suggests, you can wear it beyond nine months. 
and it was developed because the founder similarly as we all if we get pregnant you'll know struggled to find maternity wear that felt like her and wasn't just really like frumpy awful like wrap dresses and rouge tops so she created a line to not only feel like yourself whilst you're pregnant but also it's worth spending the money on because you can wear it after you've had the baby and everything I've got I've probably got like maybe four pieces from beyond now and then the two that I've just added are now these and I've the older pieces I've got which I've had since Gabe I've worn I wore all through my pregnancy with him and since uh like this year like up until this year so I just they're like part of my normal wardrobe but anyway um they asked if I wanted to pick something which I did and then they've also included their newest jumpsuit which I didn't realize they were going to do so it was really kind of them but here's the pieces I chose so this is a tracksuit as you can see it's a navy one and this is the jumper this is called I think this is called Zoe I love it because it's got a high neck and a zip and it's also got like a slightly lower back and it's curved so I think with both the tracksuit and also leggings this will just look great especially postpartum and then these are the trousers that go with it and they're just a really nice shape I'll put them on so you can see but they've got a seam down the front and you can't really see but they're kind of like a peg leggy sort of shape which I always find quite flattering and then this is their newest jumpsuit so I have the sleeveless version of this which is called the poppy I think this is called I want to say Cleo I don't think it's called that let me check the name for you and I'll insert it but anyway they've basically launched it with long sleeves so again there's poppers down here so you can breastfeed and then pockets here but also you don't need to be pregnant to wear these things so I'm going to pop them on and show you what they look like okay here we go here's the tracksuit so I got the top in an extra small which I think was the right size because it is oversized anyway, houses the bump, but equally once the bump is not here, and I'm just running around in my sweaty bay leggings being like a sassy Pilates mum. I like that this will cover, very particular about the crotch being covered, especially in leggings. So I, I feel like this will cover the crotch, which is great, um, but it doesn't drown me too much. I mean, it is obviously oversized, but the sleeves are a really good size so that's great that's just the label taping out there and then these are the trousers that I got in a small they're not too tight around the bump but tight ish I am basically nine months pregnant so if I'd have bought these at the beginning of my pregnancy they would have lasted the whole pregnancy no problem um and equally when there's no bump I'm sure they'll fit fine if not I can just like tie this here and make them a little bit tighter but I think they'll be fine I think an extra small would have been a bit of a squeeze okay here we go here is the again i can't remember the name of this i want to say cleo i don't know if it is but the cleo jumpsuit here we are basically nine months pregnant again this is a size small pockets here really nice neckline like you could actually dress this up quite nicely with like heels and like lots of jewelry and if you had your hair down nice kind of cropped sleeve so good for layering you could also put like a tight sort of ribbed roll neck or something underneath or like a little cropped vest that was tight that came up here i always have to roll up beyond nine stuff because it's a bit long for me but i i do enjoy that look i've got some burks here let's whack these on i don't know if these are the right shoes for this actually that's the jumpsuit honestly i don't want it like all of this so so comfortable it's such a soft jersey it's so nice i'll be able to wear this quite easily post preg and it's just great for running around a soft play like all that kind of stuff all the kiddie stuff that you need to do where you need to move after having a baby these are great for but you also feel like i'm not like a frumpy mum. do you know what i mean right now i do have to go let's get in the car i'll keep you warm in december how'd you like to spend christmas hello there um, so I'm just dipping in to end this vlog of course because it's I don't even know what to say about it it's so long thank you so much if you got this far I've also realized that I'm uploading right in the midst of vlogmas so it will probably get lost <laughs> so brill this is my last week working before I go on maternity leave I mean I'm, I'm, I, w I won't promise anything obviously but hopefully I can do you know what let's just not say anything thank you so much for watching and yeah I'll hopefully see you on the next one. Mwah.